Valve has been trying for a long time to address the cheating issue in Counter-Strike, and most people have perceived their attempts as unsuccessful due to the cheaters that are running rampant at high elos. In another attempt to counter these cheaters, Valve released an update at the end of April of 2024. This update allegedly introduced the Overwatch system to Counter-Strike 2, limiting its access to trusted partners. If you looked at the code itself, there were hints to changes to VAC Live. As always, Valve has remained ambiguous about the update. Their mentality is that any information they release is more information for cheat developers. It has been a month since the update was released. How can we tell if it's working? Did they nuke every single cheater in existence? Sadly not. But Leadify public data shows some information. It tracks the match data of millions of players. And we can see that the anti-cheat update may be more effective than before. A common stat thrown around was the fact that almost a quarter of all kills in the 20-25k premiere rating were with a scout, which is the preferred weapon of spin botters that ruin your Sunday evening. The R8 and the auto sniper also had suspiciously high kill usage, most likely due to their high penetration and one-shot headshot wallbang potential. After the update, the weapon distribution was much more reasonable, with the scouts sitting at 5.8% and the R8 barely existing as it should for such a disgusting weapon. Unfortunately for players above 25k, their rank is still significantly contaminated with cheaters, albeit slightly improved. The kill percentage of the scout has decreased from 60% to 43. For ratings 15 to 20k, the weapon distribution has not appeared to change significantly, meaning that cheaters are either skewed towards higher ranks, are less blatant, or both in these ranks. However, the metric of weapons used in games may not be completely reliable at distinguishing between cheaters and non-cheating players. Let's look at some more damning evidence, such as the time to damage and cross replacement accuracy. The method by which Leadify measures time to damage is the time it takes for you to hit someone after they appear on your screen. This is not your reaction time, because it also factors in cross replacement, accuracy, weapon fire rate, and your reaction time. The human benchmark places the average reaction time between 150 and 300 milliseconds. This means that your time to damage will be slightly above these numbers, based on those previous factors. When looking at the stats before the update, it looks normal for all ranks all the way to 20k, which makes sense because a better player will have better cross replacement and most likely a faster time to damage. Afterwards, the data becomes more sketchy and starts trending towards unrealistic numbers. Players at the ELO of 25k and above have a time to kill of 100 milliseconds average or less, and their cross replacement is absolutely phenomenal. I guess it becomes a little bit easier when you have wall hacks and aimbot. After this update, ranks 1k to around 23 to 24k become much more reasonable, but the players at much higher ranks are still extremely sketchy. While it may be common sense to most people, this is further evidence that cheaters skew towards higher ranks, especially before the anti-cheat update. I'm not saying cheaters don't exist at lower ranks, especially when a cheater makes a new account that will need to climb the ranks. But an issue I think we do need to address is that people have become so jaded by the cheating issue is that every lucky kill through a smoke and a pre-fire of a common angle leads to infinite accusations. Lucky shots happen. If you are at 10k elo, you're more likely running into smurfs or players that are just having a good day rather than cheaters. Sorry for the reality check. Back to the stats, the number of kills reached by top fraggers also changed after the update. Before, 14.7% of the games had top fraggers getting 40 kills or more. After the update, that number dropped in half to about 7.6%. Once again, it seems like there are still cheaters around but the trends indicate that the number of cheaters may be decreasing. It's also interesting to note that the number of players in extremely high ranks has decreased, which you may have noticed with the rank it required to get onto the leaderboards in CS2. Once again, Leadify gives us a much more detailed look, but keep in mind that they do not track every player. Before the anti-cheat update, approximately 1,000 players were tracked at the ELO of 25k or above. After the rank update, that number decreased to about 500 players. This doesn't guarantee that cheaters in those ranks were banned, or maybe just players deranking. But combining this with the previous data, I would like to think so. You might ask then why this is not being reflected in websites that track back waves. Why are we not getting Leadify notifications that players from previous matches have been banned? According to Gabe Follower, a reliable member of the CS2 community when it comes to data scraping and leaks, Back Life has been using bands that are not necessarily Overwatch bands or the bands we are used to seeing in the past. 
Instead, they're using bands that are hidden from the API, meaning there's no accurate way to track those bands. As per Valve tradition, they love keeping us in the dark. It is also worth pointing out that the cheating problem is regionally dependent. Going back for the time to damage stat, before the update, in the rank of 20 to 25k elo, the Asian region had 45% of players with a time to damage of 300 milliseconds or lower. Compared with the 21.5% in North America and the 29.7% in Europe. After this update, Asia had 16.6%, North America at 2.55%, and Europe had 5.6% of players with a time to kill of 30 milliseconds or lower. This is a significant decrease across all three continents, but Asia still has a significantly larger population of suspicious players. Is there a difference in the access to cheats in different regions? Or they could just be god tier gamers. For a slightly more funny but equally depressing stat, let's look at how cheaters just completely stop using flashes. As players become more familiar with the game, the number of flashes thrown increases from ELO's 1k to, you know, 20k. And then BAM! The cheating pandemic hits. A rapid and sudden decrease of flashes thrown. To the point where at the ranks of 26 to 27k, there's almost zero flashes being thrown per game, per player. I guess flashes just become a liability when they stop you from fooning down ivy and shooting through walls. Would I be a better player if I stopped throwing flashes? I mean, the numbers can't lie, right? Alright, so what does this data all mean? Valve definitely did not solve the cheating problem. There are still going to be games in Premiere ruined by rage hackers and closeted cheaters, especially at much higher ranks. However, it appears to be that they are moving in the right direction. Whether cheaters are getting banned, becoming more worried with the announcement of Overwatch, or maybe a popular cheat got detected, only Valve truly knows. However, based on this data, it appears to be that something is changing, and I'm cautiously optimistic that Valve may be heading in the right direction. And I want to reiterate, I am not saying Valve did their job, or that the issue is completely fixed. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments if you have personally noticed a difference.